Um, I'm so glad to have so many great people decided not to teach this year. Um, some of you have done this before, some of you are new. I love when we have that one with people because the, the uh, veterans can help coach the new people and they have a lot of insights uh, since you guys have been on sort of the front lines. You guys have some insights into that experience that I don't because I'm in the administrative realm, so it's great to have your expertise here. Uh, for the most part, <coughs> I think we have new folks. Um, this training today is just for the preschool through fifth grade teachers. So we have um, Talent Children, Treasure Hunting, Food of the Need, and Exploring Our Origins represented here. There are seven trainings for all the other classes. Um, and maybe we could just kind of go over real quickly and do a really brief introduction. Who are you? What are you teaching? One more time. Um, I think that would be great because then we get a sense of, well, some of you can spot out who you might be teaching with. And we have a sense of which classes are represented here today. So, Cindy, maybe if you could go first. Sure. I'm Cindy Kerry. I'm teaching treasure hunting on Saturdays. Stephanie Simon, treasure hunting on Saturdays. Luke Anderman, treasure hunting on Saturdays. Lori Wendland, treasure hunting Sundays. No. Uh, <laughs> there's one in every car. Kelly Bradford, I'm teaching child children. I'm Hannah Pinkerton, I'm teaching Chalice on Sunday at 11. I'm Cass Pinkerton, I'm teaching Chalice on Sunday at 11. Jennifer Whitman, I'm teaching Exploring Our Origins 9 on Sundays. And I'm Dory Lightfoot, I'm teaching Chalice Children on Sundays at 11. I'm Karen Timberlake, I'm teaching Free to Believe on Saturdays. Justin Martin, I'm teaching Treasure Living at 9 a.m. on Sundays. Carissa Hodgson, free 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 on Saturdays. Uh, I'm Brian Scott, teaching with your hunting guy, I'm using this. Well, what about treasure hunting? I'm using this. Rachel Kearns, how are you? I'm teaching child's children on Saturdays. Mark Russell, uh, I'm working on Saturday. Luke Gilbert, how are you? Child's children, I'm on Saturdays. John Shale, exploring our origins on Saturdays. Janice Matt Cordes, Chalice Children on Sunday at 11. Niles Sandy, Chalice Children on Sunday. Um, Sharon Simmons, Free to Believe on Sunday at 11. I know you want to Danielle Shesky, Origins on Sunday at 9. Paula Hall, Charles Children, Sunday at 9. Brad Stern, Jimmy Savings. Sarah Sullivan, Free to Believe, Sundays at 11. Lori Schwartz, uh, Treasure for Days at 9. Okay. Lucy, you want to just quickly introduce yourself? You did, you did it for me. <laughs> Your experience this year. 
Um, we use the term ministry around here uh, fairly loosely but intentionally, if that makes sense. Um, we see a lot of the work that we do here not, um, as ministry to our congregation, which is different than being a minister per se, but um, when we talk about ministering to our congregation, we're just talking about caring for each other and caring for the people who are part of this community. And so I think of you all as our educational ministry. You're the ones who are in charge of bringing our education to life and bringing the care and heart into our educational program. So thank you for doing our educational ministry, a big part of what we do in our community here. Um, we could have the best curriculum in the world, and I think we have pretty good curriculum. It's not perfect, it's always a work in progress. Um, but really without the commitment and the caring and the engagement of our educational ministers, it's just a bunch of pieces of paper. So you really bring light into the program. Um, our goal in the program is not to impart a lot of knowledge that our kids can then regurgitate to us. This is a school school. We really go out of our way, I think, to make it very different than being in school. Um, our goal is really to nurture a sense of faith and spiritual development in a very caring and loving community. Um, and so that is the focus. That we want that to be the essence of our program, not so much the content, but the community piece of what we do here. Um, and I think if you ask any minister if their task is all about giving, 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 they'll say, oh, absolutely not. I get so much out of doing the ministry. Um, you know, just as much as I give, if not more. I certainly hope and think that that would be your experience as well as educational ministers here. Um, that in, in doing that work with our kids, that um, I hope you will learn and grow and that your life will be enriched by that as well. And um, we, we're kind of on a mission, I'm kind of on a mission to make that a really rich experience for you this year. So we're going to be focusing more on um, that piece for the teachers of how to make this a really rich and nourishing experience for you on top of the world. So let's start a bit uh, talking about purpose here today. And I want to start out by talking about the program's purpose and then talking about your purpose or your role within that program. So we're going to do kind of a quick brainstorming here. Um, given that we are a religious institution, a uh, union institution, um, and a large children's RE program. Can we just brainstorm some ideas about what you think we might hope to accomplish with the children's religious education program here at FUS? To just throw out ideas about what you think we're here for. What do you want to achieve? We can make friends with one another, meaningful relationships. Great. Mm -hmm.
allow the children so that, that we wouldn't have those different ways that children learn and experience. We wanted to have a sense of home, acceptance, uh, meaningful but simple conversations, encouraging kids to be expressive, supporting respectful behavior among another and modeling that. And um, we like the word equanimity for ourselves and for our students. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you.
this year, as I mentioned, I'm going to focus on the piece of educational ministry and how to support you all in doing that. So I want to talk a little bit about how we would like to help you to focus on the hard piece of that. Um, hopefully you read one of my emails. Are you looking for who that was? Lucy. Lucy, you need to here. Thank you, um, That in October we're planning Teacher Tuesday, and we're pretty excited about that. Um, ways to better support teachers. I think that the whole piece of all these two pieces lies. I think the importance of focusing on nurturing your teaching team is really important and, and often gets overlooked. But um, I think it's fair to say that the stronger teaching teams in our classes and stronger experiences and more richer experiences for everyone who's involved. Um, and uh, I think it's also true that what ends up being the most frustrating experience for teachers is behavior management, the direct behavior management. So that's what we're going to focus on on Teacher Tuesday. It's October 9th, and we'll be here, and we're going to feed you, and we're going to have child care. We're going to start out the evening with uh, all of us together in here focusing on I'm not exactly sure what yet, but I probably will have to do with creating sacred space for kids. And really kind of how do we speak to the heart and soul of our kids in the context of our classes. That's what I'm leaning towards right now. Um, and then we're going to break up by classes, so all the treasure hunting people will go to one place, all the creative people and so on. And during that breakout time, you will be meeting with um, a professional teacher who will work with that age group talk about behavior management skills, and uh, hopefully also someone who has taught that curriculum once or twice or five times, um, and can talk a bit about pieces of that curriculum. And then you will break up into teaching teams, and I'll have some um, activities for you to do with your team that will hopefully help strengthen your team. So the timing of it is strategic in that you will have already had a few weeks under your belt to see what might be some trouble spots, either with your team or with your class. Um, and um, then you'll, but, but it's really not clear that you can address those things early on, whether it be with your team members, you know, some interpersonal thing with your team members or with your class. So I really hope the strength of that night, I think, is going to be on having everyone here. Please, please, I know it's never going to happen. I'm just going to put it out to the universe. It would be great to have everyone on your team here that evening. Um, so that's one way that we hope to help you all. Um, the, another way is through that Facebook page that um, I sent out that email about that. Got so many responses. Um, so let me just uh, clarify that that is just entirely meant to be a supplemental thing and not a source of critical information for you. For instance, the kind of thing that I would put on there is we take pictures of all of these people that you have filled in and put that on Facebook. Um, or I come across an article and I think, oh, that would be really cool for our teachers to read, and I put that on there. Um, or you come across something that you think is great and you put it on there. Or you say, wow, this thing happened in class and I was really confused, I was really frustrated, I was really odd, or whatever it might be, and that's your way to share that with us. So it's a way to bolster what you do, not to it if that makes sense. So <clears throat> Facebook is one thing. Um, we have someone on the Children's Religious Education Ministry team who's working on gathering uh, links to videos that you think might be helpful to you, that maybe model behavior management or um, you know, could be a TED talk about, about something. So she's putting together a list of links so that we have a kind of a video library, um, and then we'll share that with you all to use as you wish. Another one that was inspired by Kathy, so we're so happy to have Kathy with <laughs> us. She's, she's given us great ideas. Um, and don't feel like you have to read everything that goes out there or watch every video link. I don't want you to sit there thinking, 
thinking like, holy cow, what did I get myself into? <laughs> it's there for the taking. You can take it or leave it. Okay? So, just so you know. And then, um, another thing that I'm going to start doing this year, um, usually for at least the first three quarters of the year, I send out um, almost always weekly teacher news thing with information that I think would be helpful. So starting in October, I'm going to have a theme for each um, teacher news for that month. And it could be something like teaching anti-racism to kids, or um, creating sacred space for kids, or making an energy, facilitating discussions with kids, addressing special needs with kids, things like that. And I will include information, uh, and I will send that out each week, the same thing about that each week, because I know teachers rarely read teachers' news every week, so they have a whole month to catch up on that information if they choose to. Um, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is um, the, the UUA, the Unitarian Universalist Association, uh, probably about seven years ago or so, came out with a whole series of called Tapestry of Faith. And in Tapestry of Faith, they included for teachers, for every lesson, a way for teachers to spiritually prepare for that lesson. So I'm just going to steal from them and find nuggets that I think are worthwhile for teachers to spiritually prepare before they walk into the classroom. So those will be a part of those teachers' news emails as well, as a way to hopefully support women. So, any questions about any of that? Yeah, um, is there another way that we as a group ever be put in? Other than that, to the Yes. <laughs> Yes. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Why are they moving? Oh, yeah. 
dealing with behavioral problems, it's also like, wow, I love the way you guys are sharing over there. That kind of emphasizes the positive things too. So there's those distinctions between the um, teaching roles. We always have two teachers each week. We have a role that there has to be two adults in the classroom as part of the congregational safety. So you'll see when you fill out the calendar with your teaching team that somebody signs up for curriculum, somebody signs up for community. Um, you don't have to choose one or the other for the whole year. In fact, I would encourage you not to do that. Um, ideally, your community lead one week per month and curriculum lead one week per month. Um, and, you know, the last bit of it, I would say we try to bring head, heart, and soul into the classroom is through whatever you bring to that equation. Um, so, you know, I think it's important that you be authentic, that you be um, as willing to take a risk as you help your kids that are in the classroom, um, that you have curiosity and an open mind, just like you would hope they would bring to the equation. Uh, I, I would hope that when you come here and you finish your time teaching for that day, you're not just like, whoop, got that done, out of the way. Um, so it's not just something to check off your list that, that you bring something into that experience um, because I think it would be much richer for you and for them. Um, along that line, uh, Tracy Herbert is one who used to be in charge of child and family development at the UU Wing, and she came up with this list of questions to kind of bring to the forefront for you, your spiritual preparation, um, how to make this, how to make teaching more meaningful. So, to what extent can or has this teaching experience, and this is to ask yourself each time you're in the classroom, can or has this teaching experience deepened my relationship with one or more child? To what extent can or has this teaching experience deepened my relationship with one or more other adults? To what extent can or has this teaching experience deepened my sense of belonging to this community? And to what extent can or has this teaching experience given me knowledge or insights about my faith. So I think I think there are good questions to ask and a good way to kind of keep um, keep it all meaningful for you because you're doing it and not make it just a an empty I don't know list of tasks to put some meaning into it. So um, the good thing is that you're not doing all of this um, there's a lot of things that help support teachers in the work that they do, and so I want to talk about the bigger picture of who all is involved in your classes. Um, each class, hopefully, I think there's a couple of holes yet in our volunteer list, but most classes have a classroom support coordinator. We have a couple of classes that are particularly small this year, especially at 11 o'clock, um, so you may not have a classroom support That class or another one. Um, but generally speaking, your classroom support coordinator is responsible for uh, taking your picture on the first day of classes, the first and second weeks probably, because we put your pictures outside of the classroom so that parents can, um, and our staff, um, <laughs> can identify the names and match the names with the faces, I guess. Um, and mostly what they do though is they plan parent helpers, they schedule parent helpers. So on any given week of teaching, you should have yourself, your co-teacher, and a parent helper, which is really nice, and for some of those larger classes, we need essentials. Um, so that's, that's nice. And then, they plan a little bit of things for you, but you don't need to know about that. <laughs> um, there are faith and action coordinators for K-1, second, third grade, fourth, and fifth grade. Faith and action is um, worked into your calendar, for the year, there are specific dates that we that we have designated, and those are an opportunity for our kids to get out into the community, become aware of the world, um, focus on compassion, and do service to the community beyond FUS. K1, they tend to stay in here, but still do a service thing like they're very fond of making pet toys for the Humane Society. 
Um, but other classes might get out and do other things. They might do like uh, clean up at the arboretum or um, planning uh, activities for Salvation Army. There's a whole long list of things. And so each of you, ideally, there's a couple goals in the volunteer list, but have a faith and action coordinator who is responsible for planning that. We ask that one teacher be present for that, um, just because it's nice to have someone who's familiar with the kids. Um, and it's usually pretty fun. So there's that. Um, there's the parent helpers that I mentioned who show up each week to give you a hand. And I would encourage you to be really intentional and, and put some thought into how you can best utilize that parent helper. Um, one of the easy ways to have them do attendance is people come into the classroom. But um, you know, really think as you're as you're thinking about what the lesson is for that week, how can I best utilize this other individual? And then hope that they show up. Sometimes they do, but usually they do. Uh, Karen is over there. Karen Anderson. She's the Army program assistant, and she is the person who's in charge of all the registrations. She is the woman who gets your supplies together for you every week, and she's going to talk to you about that a little more soon. Um, she makes sure you have all the name tags you need, the attendance sheets, so she, she is the queen of lots of resources that uh, you benefit from. Uh, we have religious education readers on Saturdays that are stationed at the entrance to the Landmark Auditorium and Sundays are stationed down the hall there. They are the people who are signing in visitors. So people are allowed to just come and visit your classes. Um, we ask that they visit no more than three times and then make a decision about registering or not. Some of you, many of you have full classes. And uh, we will still allow visitors, but we let them know that they can't officially enroll in that class. So from the beginning, we were thinking about other times that they could enroll. But they support you in that. They're dealing with the visitors. Um, the visitors sign in with them. Probably some of these were one of those parents that signed in and already did it. And then they take them down to the classroom to show them where, where it is. And if you're in the classroom, they'll introduce the visitors to you. So they're, they're good support. Um, me, um, I focus more on the curriculum content, uh, dealing with class issues, behavioral issues, special needs issues, teaching team issues, teachers news, planning things like this, planning the great teacher appreciation unit. Um, so that's my piece. Um, and then there's a children's art and ministry team that meets each week that's planning some behind the scenes things for you, like the Facebook page, the video library, um, they plan the um, teacher appreciation dinner, and they also this year, every few years we like to feature our classes in our monthly newsletter, just to, there's so many people in our community who really don't know much about children's religious education, and we think it's an awesome program and we want to brag about it. Um, so, <coughs> We will, each one of them will focus on a particular class. And so someone from the CRE ministry team may be contacting you to um, ask you questions about how the class is going, what you like about that curriculum. They may come and talk to the students in your class uh, to put together a little article for the newsletter. And then the other piece of your support is your teaching team. Know, to really lean on each other um, for inspiration, for camaraderie, for humor, for uh, processing difficult situations, uh, you know the drill. So that's your village, your CRE village, lots of support to help you in the work that you do. Um, okay, so I'm like really behind now. Far behind now. Um, do you want to go? Do you want to interject here? And then I can come back to Nuts and Bolts? Um, sure, so I won't dismiss people to their... Yeah, don't. No. Okay. okay. Um, here we go. Let's stand up. Alright. Sí. 
Stay loud, but don't touch the right body part. Touch a wrong body part. Are you ready? You have enough room? Okay. Get a good one, it's where you came in, sign in. That's where the new ones are at our right time. And if everybody else can check their calendars to make sure there's all the months in the school year. Okay, so there's a few things I'm responsible for. And I have notes, so I don't forget what they are. One of them is making sure you have attendance sheets. And like Leslie was saying, we have many different children in the classroom and many different teachers. So we're really trying to think of ways um, that everybody can be aware of who has permission to have their photo taken or who has a, a severe nut allergy. So we've done things a little bit differently. We have put that information right on the attendance. So I've got a copy here just for each table. This is confidential information because there's an allergy on here. Um, just to look over, pass this to the last table. So we're hoping that by having everything on one sheet, the parent volunteers, the teachers, everybody's going to know who has what allergy, who has photo permission. My thought is really that the kids are going to be doing it. I'd like this to stay with the parent helpers or the teachers because I don't want any teasing about, well, my parents have me have my picture taken. Um, this is really just a tool so that the adults in the classroom know, hey, you know, I, I, this is okay to take a picture of this kid doing this work and share it with the group, and it's not okay for this person. So, um, health concerns might be listed on there too if it's a if it's not too confidential. Behavior problems aren't listed on there. Leslie sends, or not behavior problems, behavior concerns. Leslie sends that in separate emails to teaching teams because we really want to keep that confidential. Um, if a child enrolls after your class begins, I will um, send an updated contact list. So all of you have contact lists in the inside binder for your class session. That's going to change as more families register or things shift around. Every time those changes happen on my little checklist, I've got a note that says that I need to inform the classroom teachers and the CSCs. So everybody should be kind of kept um, updated. One thing that you what is the CSC? Oh, good question. So the CSC is the Community Support Coordinator, and they support um, the teachers by um, arranging for parent helpers in the younger grades. Um, they might um, arrange for an event outside of the class to get people to kind of come together in the little community. Yeah, we might ask them help classes and no teachers who might want something. Yes. Um, okay. Would we ask the CSC to help in the class if there's uh, a teacher that's missing? Yes. 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 Correct. Yes. If you are short of teachers, you can ask your class and support coordinator to help you out that day. Good. I'm learning a lot. Doesn't um, sometimes someone gets sick or something. Right, right. Uh, uh, so the CSC is a really an important part in a class I'm learning about. Um, if somebody, if, uh, if if a parent says, a parent helper might say, hey, my kid has not this allergy, they have a different allergy. That is like really critical information. So please let Leslie or I know anything a parent might have might tell you that their kid has, you know. A sensitivity to sunscreen, and they didn't mention it when they filled out their report. If a parent says anything like that, just please send me Karen Anderson, Karen A at FUSMadison.org, an email, or um, I'm here Saturday, I'll be here on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so I, I'm really keen about making sure everybody's got all that information. If um, a person enrolls at their classes start, I will make a name tag for them. Let me know. If somebody's name tag gets ripped up or is obscured in some
some way. I think. <laughs> um, uh, let me know and I will make you a name tag. I would encourage if children need to put stickers on their name tag, if they could just put them right on the exact name tag and not on the lanyard or the this pocket part, that we I can throw some away. So um, if they need to decorate them, they could just decorate the card part. That would be great. Uh, let's see. Oh, now that's why I do like Supplies. Supplies come in three ways. <laughs> this can add some interest in the class that might be bored. Just cover it up and it can make, it can make a, a supply look interesting for a moment before they really know what it is. So, um, there's boxes like these in classroom closets that will be labeled with um, what's what should be inside them. If these boxes start to get low, let me know. Um, it's, you can either put a note in your supply bin. This is a supply bin. So every week you're going to get uh, a box like this that's got, well, most weeks, that has supplies specific to the lesson that you're working on that week. Um, and you can leave notes for me in the supply bin because I, I empty them out. And if somebody needs a name tag, that's a fine place to leave you a note. So because um, if, if there's like, my markers are dry. I need new markers. You can leave me down here. Also, the supply room, which you'll be seeing later, is open and you can go and stop your own stuff if you want. Um, so, the supply room has, so, oh, these containers stay where they are. They just stay there. These containers are kind of what's in the supply room. They also stay where they are. So, this is googly eyes. But let's say you want to, you're doing a, thought of a neat idea that's not in the lesson plan, but you'd like to have some googly eyes for your neat idea. We've got little containers like this, and like this, and they're sitting on top. We'll point them out when we have a tour. Take what you want from the supply closet and put them in these containers, and then put the box back on the shelf. And the reason why is because somebody else might have a great idea with googly eyes too. So, When I'm packing this, these supply boxes for the class, I'm packing for all the sections. So all the sections will be in one class. They won't, most likely, they will not be divided up. Please know that I am looking at the weekly enrollment, and I am counting how many children are in each, se in each section, and then I'm allowing for three visitors. So I've got an abundance of supplies, Plus three. If you use, if you find, you know, somebody is coloring on a paper cone and they mess it up five times and then you go through five paper cones, if you think of it, put a note in that supply box so I know to replenish it for the next class. Um, let's see. If you plan something special for your class and that's, that you believe would go better with the idea that we're trying to communicate in the curriculum, and it's something special that you can't go and get, and you want me to get it for you, I need to know by Tuesday. Because I don't, I work Saturday and Sunday, so I don't work Thursday and Friday. Um, so I need to know by Tuesday, so I have a Wednesday to go and get it. Um, and I pretty much, I either bike or bus, so um, I only drive my car. So if, you, if I know Tuesday before I go home, then I need to bring my car so I can run and get some of my cool. We have to do that. Um, so, uh, Leslie is not here right now. Um, do you want to learn, like, um, you know, another little brain, brain break? Things, I know she's going to have a break for you in about 10 minutes, but, um, we could do a, a brain break. Um, so my background is teaching, um, I taught at Red Caboose 4K for uh, about 14 years, and then I also taught at Latin School. Um, and then I also did summer camp at Marquette, so my experience is birth through fifth grade. And, um, and so from there I learned that there's a great site called Go Noodle. And maybe someone who have heard of Go Noodle. They've got a bunch of different channels and um, a bunch of little brain breaks. And um, I think if I see that kids are getting 
loud, the fence is getting louder, or um, you know, it's just been doing too much redirecting. I might do uh, a break or right with them. Fortunately, we don't have to do that though, because Leslie has come into the room and um, she is here, and I'm not just missing to the break yet, right? No. no. Okay, so that's it for me. It's up there is about supplies that I can think of.
I have designated when different choirs are going to be uh, performing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is helpful because you may have a kid in the choir and you may want to know that you don't want to teach that day because you don't want to be busy setting up class when your kids are singing. Um, so, there's that. And, oh, that didn't work out so great, did it? Well, I wanted you to see that I'm telling you what daylight savings is. <laughs> and I also um, tell you when faith in action is for the 20th and 21st for this particular curriculum. Um, and like I mentioned, we like to have a teacher helper with that activity. And the, the faith in action people are asked to let you know what they're cooking up at least two weeks ahead of time so that you can plan accordingly. The more time, the more events time. So that's what your calendars are like. And we're not there yet. So, um, what else do I want to say about that? Um, parent of parents name tags for everyone, as she mentioned. Please wear them. I know, like, after a while, you might think, oh, I know, I don't have to bother wearing that. But um, the visitors don't know you, the kids may not know. Kids all start out in service for 20 or 25 minutes and then they come to class. 
Um, so we especially don't have to bother with that. Also, the treasure hunting and challenge children a few years ago I went through all those lessons and updated them. And so there are notes before each lesson of uh, adaptations that we've made for those curricula. So you want to be sure to read those. And there's like an introductory thing about the adaptations that we've made. So there's a lot of information in there. Um, I would really encourage you to read through your lessons well in advance. Um, for two reasons. One is that you will come to know your group really well and you can make some decisions about what's going to work well for them and what isn't. Um, you may read through a lesson, like if you read for a few days ahead of time as opposed to the night before, and then you may think, oh, I, I saw something that I think would fit in really well with this, and it gives you some time to pull that together if you decide to do that. Um, and maybe most importantly, that it gives you time to make that content authentically you. Like, how can you deliver this in a way that's authentic to you, where you're not just reading from the curriculum, but you kind of absorbed, what are we doing, where are we going, what's this lesson about, and then you can just deliver it in a way that is you. So, that makes sense. Um, I want you to also know, for those of you new to teaching, that parents are always welcome to stay in class uh, up until the later grades, so that doesn't include the people who are here. The parents are always welcome to stay in class. Uh, this happens a lot in the preschool and K-1 classes where the kids aren't quite ready to let their parents go, and that's totally fine. So there's no one that's okay. Um, yeah. And just a, a couple of words. We're going to focus a lot on behavioral issues at that October meeting, but I just want to say that if you are having issues during those first few weeks, don't hesitate to let me or Karen know. We really want to address those issues early on. Um, I think that's to everyone's benefit, it's to the class's benefit, it's certainly to your benefit, and it's certainly to your So let us know. Um, Karen is going to be here most Saturdays and Sundays. I'm going to be here every other Saturday and all but one Sunday a month. Um, and we will either be in the commons area up there or in the supply room. So you can come find us if you're having any issues or come talk to us after class and let us know if there's anything. Um, some, some basic strategies to use. We don't use restraint, physical restraint on kids in our program. Um, but if you're having any issues, you know, maybe kneeling down and talking at eye level with them, maybe removing that child from the room. Um, just to have a private conversation with them about concerns that you're having. Uh, when, when we are having issues, the first thing we do is talk to the parents and see if this issue is happening in other places and what are some strategies that are being used at school, for instance, so that we can have a consistent plan of action. Uh, and, uh, you know, there have been years when someone at the end of the year says, oh, it's such a frustrating year because of this behavior or that behavior. Why did you suffer through the whole year? You know, we could have, we could have addressed that early on, so I don't encourage you to do that. And um, I think part of what makes people hesitant to intervene in challenging behaviors is that uh, that kid's parent, for instance, might be a teacher and you might feel uncomfortable intervening when their parent is there. That's something that I hope you will talk about with your teaching teams about how you want to address that. Uh, but if you are human beings, like there are some behaviors, it's just not, you don't have to respond to every little thing, right? But I think it's worth asking yourself, what, what is the consequence of ignoring a particular behavior? If you're seeing a kid being destructive or disrespectful or um, disengaged or whatever, what is the consequence of ignoring that behavior? Is it, you know, how is that going to affect the kid? How is that going to affect the community? If, you, if there is disrespectful behavior going on in the classroom, how will that impact the feeling of safety um, in your class? Um, how will that impact you as a teacher? Um, so, you know, I think lots of times it's really, as educational ministers, I think it's really important to help our kids learn how to be in community with each other. And uh, hopefully we'll be providing a lot of tools for you in the next eight weeks or so for how to best do that. Um, but I just 
you know, because I want to make a product for the importance of that as um, important service that we give to our kids through the classes is helping them learn to manage their behaviors and play things. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you be um, talking a little bit about kids with special needs, um, autism, selection, and resources of the um, Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Um, so we do have several kids who are on the spectrum. Um, what I started doing this year is sending a questionnaire out to the parents who have identified a special need to get more information about their child. And I've received some of those back. I'm waiting for others. Um, once I get that information after this weekend, I'll probably give people a few more days to get back to me. I will, the information that I have, I will forward to you so that you have that information as well. You are welcome to uh, reach out to parents if you want to have a conversation about them, about their child. Um, I've asked them to share some strategies that they have used with their children. Um, some of our kids will have an inclusion buddy. And that person is an adult, which I guess wasn't done last year, or maybe I missed it. But um, those are, we assign two inclusion buddies to one child who has a special need, whose parents have asked for an inclusion buddy, or it's possible that in nine weeks we'll say your child actually would really benefit from inclusion buddy. Um, and that person, the buddy's responsibility is to just focus on the needs of that child in the classroom. So that the teachers can do their thing um, and uh, look for ways to engage them as much as possible. Some of the kids have very limited engagement. That's okay, but we want a buddy who's there to meet them where they're at. And that means leaving the classroom after 15 minutes and just sitting out here playing a game or something, and that's what we'll do. Um, so if you ever feel like you have a kid in your class who would benefit from an inclusion buddy, you should let me know about that. Um, anything else about that? Okay. Yeah. Just in the class, if the parents with the kids feel comfortable, sometimes the parent can come and talk to the class about yeah. the challenges that you know, their child might have. Yeah, just to help explain it because a lot of kids, you know, they're talked about how we want the kids to be accepting of different people and different situations. And I think, you know, I've found at least with you know, fourth and fifth graders and even this, you know, second and third graders, they, they have kids who are like have different challenges at school and you know they I think most kids find it pretty forgiving and accepting of everybody and so just to put it on the table so it's not So they can also help get it out of that time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. But, it, but I think it's optional. Uh -huh. If the parent feels like it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, we have had some parents who have come and talked, and I think that's really helpful to, to the class and to the teachers and supporting with that child. So. And if you, if you have a child who you think it would really that, that would be a benefit to have a parent.
So and you can take a look at that during the break or uh, you know the one group might finish before the other during the other break up so they'll have some time to take a peek So refreshing my memory about who's going where. into room four. You can follow her. Are we taking a break or are we? Yes, yeah. we're going to take a 10 minute break. And then after 10 minutes, you can turn in room four. Thank you for reminding me about that one part of break. Mm -hmm. um, meet her in room four. Um, maybe you can hang around the hallway to point out where that is for anyone who doesn't know. And then I'll meet with the second to fifth grade teachers in courtyard room eight. Sound good?
particularly important in the older classes, and especially the religions. We've been talking about other religions all year, um, but it can come out in lots of ways in other ways too. So be mindful of that is really important. Okay. We're going to talk about the teacher Tuesday. So take just a minute to reflect on your child that you wrote. About. Is there anything that you'd want to add, given you know further discussion? Is there anything that you think you might want to add to your diagram? Maybe you just take 30 seconds to talk amongst yourselves to see if you have any ideas that you want to add to your child. Hmm. Yeah. What what does it mean you call us chalice? 
children. I mentioned that to going to be doing training for that. I'm like, and so what are you doing? Taking them to drink? So I like a better answer than that.
for 18 years means that you've sustained that for so long. Um, <coughs> and I just want you to know that that takes courage um, and a huge commitment to children. And thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>